Hi everyone, I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to this edition of 11 TV Hill. Now we often call this time of year the season of giving. With Thanksgiving and Christmas on the horizon, we use the holidays to reflect on what we're grateful for and how we can bring some joy to others. This morning, we're sharing the stories of organizations making Baltimore a better place for all of us. From helping up missions work, lifting people out of homelessness, to the House of Ruth's support of abuse survivors, and Maryland Food Bank's fight to end hunger. And joining us now from the Maryland Food Bank is their CEO, Carmen Del Cuecho. Good to see you every year. Great to be here, thank you. Yeah, I'm always impressed by the numbers. In 2023, I was reading millions of meals, 41 million meals. I mean, it shows that the need just doesn't change. It just doesn't change, exactly. So one in three Marylanders are facing food insecurity in our state, wow. Jason, which a lot of people say, how can that be, right? We're yeah. a state of six million people. You're telling me two million people, wow. but we're, we're reinforced, that's reinforced every day. We follow statistics that uh, census surveys indicate that more and more people are having a hard time to pay their bills, more and more people making sacrifices in terms of access mm -hmm. to food for the children. We're seeing demand go up, so it's a real number. Yeah, I mean, some folks will even choose the cheaper alternative, even though it's not a healthy option, but it's all they can do right now for their family. Absolutely, and that's been a big shift for us organizationally. We're trying to be much more intentional about the type of food we're distributing, so it's not sure. just food for the sake of food, but increasing the nutritional content. It's the highest level that it's ever been in our 45-year history and something we're really proud of. You do good programming. What are you up to this year as we get into Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yeah, well, you know, it's not uh, a holiday if you're hungry, as we always say. Sure. So we continue to do our standard operating. Uh, this year, we'll probably do over 45 million meals, uh, yeah. so which is going to be up nearly 10% year over year. Yeah. But in addition to that, we do try to find ways to help families really enjoy the holidays. And so this year, we'll be distributing an additional 25,000 uh, turkeys and all the uh, accompaniments that yeah. go with that in an effort to make sure that people will have a, a, a holiday meal with their family. And, and for the people when they give, I mean, it's not an exorbitant amount that you're giving. Like 40 bucks can make a, a real difference. Huge difference, right? So we buy over $22 million worth of food. That's yeah. up maybe four times from what it was pre-pandemic. And we have tremendous buying power. So that dollar that those folks have, $40 that people give, that goes a lot further than if you did that on your own. Yeah. So our buying power allows us to buy more food and the type of food we know our communities want. Do you find it interesting that some folks can look on the outside on paper, like everything's fine, yeah. steady house, yeah. steady income, yeah. you can, lights are still on, but yeah. yet still um, are in need? Absolutely. I think that's the piece that people struggle with, right? Yeah. Like, how can that be? I'm wor people are working, but we're serving more and more working families again than any time in our family. Wages aren't always keeping up with the rates of inflation. And again, people are having to make hard decisions with food and medicine or food and other, other uh, household needs. And so, uh, yeah, so don't be deceived by the yeah. fact that someone who happens to be working doesn't feel like they have a challenge in serving their families because they do. You know, we touched on this a bit as we talk about families and those who want to give to others. I, I think it's easy to go through your pantry and think this could be something good yeah. for someone else. But when it comes to your organization, yeah. Perhaps the mighty dollar speaks yeah. a little more for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you said that. I mean, again, we always appreciate people donating food, and I do know that, I, yeah. and I've done it before. So you look in our pantry, and here's something we probably haven't going to use in the near term, and so we we will donate that. So we take that. Yeah. But going back to our buying power, that dollar that you folks folks might give us was going to go a lot further than that can of food. We'll know the right food to distribute to the right communities at the right time. I remember talking to you about pandemic time. We were going yeah. through all the supply chain issues. How long did it take for you to get back? and humming back on track oh, where you typically are. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> supply chain was a major issue for a lot of companies during the pandemic, but uh, probably still a, year, a solid year to a year and a half after that. And okay. now what we do, we, we deal with many more suppliers than we did during the pandemic uh, because okay. we want to be sure that whether it's a weather event or a pandemic or whatever might coming down the pike that we're not so uh, tethered to one or two uh, large vendors. And so yeah. that's allowed us to spread out our, our buying to more organizations, but more importantly, it's allowing us to support local businesses. We buy uh, local okay. as much as we can, whether you're a farmer or a producer. And those numbers, we've probably doubled the number of organizations Man. that we deal with on a local basis. So we think that's another value add that we can provide that not only feed people, but hopefully stimulate the economy. We have about a minute left. And when you go on your website, there's a button that says, like, how to give. Yeah. Man, there are so many different ways to give to you guys. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, from donations, you even have some, some virtual drives. Yeah. If you're someone sitting at home now throughout the year, they want to end up giving to you, give me uh, the best ways to help you out. I know with the dollar, but also there's that virtual thing you can do as well. Yeah, there's a number of things. So you can you can lead a virtual campaign, right? So okay. again, going back to dollars, there's a way that you can go on our website and you, the dollars you go to, you can pick specific foods to buy. Sure. Again, just continue to use our buying power, but at least allow you to touch and see that the fact that your dollars are actually making a, a purchase of a pallet of green beans or yeah. something like that. And then there's people who can donate their time. 
America. We still benefit from 35,000 hours of volunteer service to our organization. It's critical to our mission. So whether you want to pack a box or you want to work in our offices somehow, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to use your services. So if it's, if it's not time, uh, if it's not uh, treasure, it's time. And I'll tell you what, working on that assembly line, that's fun. <laughs> I've been there as it happens. And there, it's not just one group. You'll have multiple groups. Yeah. So now you've made community on the line. Yeah. You've also helped people. That's really cool. Really neat. Yeah, the relationships that start to form amongst yeah. our, our, our volunteers. And it's really not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a pace to it, right? As you know. Right. right. Well, you guys aren't hard to find. I'm glad you came by. I thank you Have for having me. Have a good holiday Jason. season. Same to you. Thanks. Thank you. And for uh, the past week, the Baltimore Ravens, they've made sure that everyone can put a full Thanksgiving meal on the table. The team stopped by George Washington Elementary School in Big Town to hand out food to hundreds of families. Team President Sashi Brown and the Ravens cheerleaders, along with Poe, were all on hand. It's exciting, you know, all the energy we get from the kids and the families and the community is, is awesome as we head into this holiday season and we're giving it right back. So we're really happy to be here, honored to be able to have this platform to give back to the community. We're always thinking about the academics of the child, but we really need to consider the whole child. And so health is one of the biggest things. So we're making sure that, you know, they're eating good for the holidays. We're making sure that everyone feels included. Way more than 2,000 turkeys leading up to Thanksgiving Day. Thank <laughs> you.